Hey, welcome back everyone to another great episode of Sell Those Flipping Cars. I'm Zachary, and in today's episode, we're replacing the spark plugs and coils on the 2003 Ford Expedition. Stay tuned, guys. Yeah! Welcome back everyone. As I said, we're going through the 2003 Ford Expedition spark plug and coil replacement on the 5.4 liter V8 2003 Ford Expedition. So, uh, as if you know anything about your spark plugs, when your spark plugs foul or they get dirty, they can cause misfires, they can cause a uh, lack in fuel economy. When the spark is not there in that cylinder, the fuel has to go somewhere, right? And that's what it does. It just doesn't burn. Sometimes it burns, sometimes it doesn't, because that's what the spark plug is doing. It's being intermittent. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And when that happens, that fuel starts coating the cylinder walls and the piston, okay? That's how carbon deposits are actually created in these engines. And that's not good. That's no bueno, okay? <laughs> So you want to make sure your spark plugs and coils are working correctly. What's great about OBD2 scanners now is that when you plug them in to your vehicle, they usually tell you what cylinder, what bank has a misfire. You have bank one and bank two. You have cylinders on that side, which you have to look at your firing order to see which ones are there. But most up-to-date scanners will tell you exactly what cylinder is giving you problems. Now on this one it's cylinder 3, but uh, it is time to have new spark plugs and coils all the way around. Uh, this vehicle is pushing over 180,000 miles. Uh, doing it's, it's going great. I mean the owner constantly drives this thing to Florida and back or back to Georgia from Virginia. And uh, it's time for some maintenance upkeep. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna bring you guys in close and uh, we're gonna walk through this on how to get down to the spark plugs and the coils, replacing them, and then throwing everything back together. So let's get started, guys. First, guys, you wanna remove this intake tube, okay? It's right here. Right there. You see it? You got your clamp. Go ahead and loosen that up. Watch the tube on this side. And go ahead and pull it off. Pull your harness off right here. It's just a uh, add pressure and it pulls off. This thing's stubborn. So <clears throat> get that as well. And uh, the clamp right here, this whole piece will come off. Accessing the fuel rail. We'll have to take that off with two eight millimeter bolts, one here and one a little bit further back. You guys see it right there? So get that one, the fuel rail. Oh, also use your um, fuel line tool, not that cap, the fuel line tool to take that clip off right there, put your fuel line tool on there with a rag wrapped around it because there is a little pressure in the line. And then uh, go ahead and unlock it by you know, inserting your fuel line tool. You guys know how to use it, so. There you go, that'll take your fuel line off and uh, you'll be able to get to the spark plugs and coils down here which it looks like right there is a another eight millimeter don't forget about your harness you need to unplug so it's one step after another guys let's go ahead and get this intake tube off and then we'll go ahead and attack those fuel lines all right, guys, we have the fuel rails disconnected. The harness is off. Um, you're down to 
this now. Oh, the sport bolts. Make sure those are out. Harnesses off and the harnesses off of the coils as well, which are these. Uh, I'm pulling that one you can't see. There we go. Coil, fuel injector. The fuel injector harness is white and the one for the coil is black. So, or the, the ends. So you'll, uh, you'll see they are not black. And now I'll indicate those are for the fuel injectors when you go to plug it back up. Uh, guys, don't forget. You sounded uh, Canadian there for a second. Don't forget, guys. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> now, hey, if there's any Canadians that actually watch the channel, comment below. Tell me where you're from. I lived in Calgary for like four years. It was cool. It was cool. All right. On the passenger side, uh, I took the coolant line off. Are they heater hose? I went ahead and just used some uh, pair of hose pliers on that same thing on this side take the connectors off for the fuel injectors take the connectors off for the coils okay let me see if i can add any light in there for you guys there you go a little bit better all right so that'll cover that the fuel rails don't have to come off all the way if you look in the back the lines look rubber after they get off the metal, they clamp on the rubber lines. I'm not saying bend the crap out of it, guys, okay? But you can gently move it out of the way for that last coil. The rest of them, it's not too bad. Uh, on the driver's side, I just want to point out this plate that sits right here, connecting it down to this bolt, okay? Take that off. To get that first coil it's going to be much easier to uh, do that i just replaced the spark plug in it and yes it was definitely due time for new spark plugs uh, this thing has a terrible misfire because of it so uh, let me check guys also uh, when you're taking the intake off the hose that is going to get it is on the back okay make sure you catch that and I didn't forget anything in the bottom of this uh, intake over here. No? Make sure you get the uh, harness uh, plugged into the, the side of the intake tube and you're good. So just go ahead one by one. Uh, the coils, their bolt is six millimeter. The rest of the bolts that you take off are eight millimeter. So make sure you put the bolts back where you take them from. Okay. So I got the first one done. I'm going to go ahead and finish up this line of uh, coils and jump to the other side. All right, guys. We are to the replacing of the spark plugs and coil part of our replacement. So make sure you have your new coils. Uh, if you do go to the parts store to order these, they're going to charge you like $40, $50, $30 a piece, some noise like that. Uh, I got these on Amazon, and I paid about 40 bucks for all eight. And I got the uh, NGK V-Power spark plugs as well. So those are pretty cheap on Amazon. But I'm going to throw the link to both of these items in the description down below. That way you guys have them as well. So if you have not ordered them, please hit the affiliate link. It is an affiliate link. And it's, uh, it's what helps me upgrade the channel to these new cool lights I have and tools and stuff like that so if you want to support the channel hit that affiliate link guys thank you so much all right so a good way of actually replacing these coils is get the coil off first you already unplugged it right then take that spark plug out replace the spark plug replace the coil plug the coil back in before you move to the next one just to save yourself some uh installation time in the end and also you won't forget about it which i have done numerous times and is very aggravating so hey guys 
uh, if you're looking for more auto DIY videos here on YouTube, I post multiple times a week and I would love to have you as a subscriber. Also, if you guys have any questions about the installations or replacements or any of the videos that I do, I want you to leave your question in the comment section down below. I answer all of my questions myself personally, and I enjoy helping you guys a lot. So also, if the video is helping you out, make sure you smash that like button. All right, let's get back to uh, replacing these spark plugs and coils. Oh, by the way, your coils are going to come with dielectric grease, okay? It is great to use dielectric grease on the end of the coil. Okay, that's what is going to come in contact with the spark plug. You don't have to lube it up and all that stuff. Okay, this isn't a, a sex show. All right, this dielectric grease will defer any water that actually comes to the spark plug. It gives the spark plug a little bit more life. But anything that is good is bad if you put too much. Okay, just like a, a salad with ranch dressing. If you have 10 pounds of it, you're still going to get fat. Okay, sorry. Same thing with dielectric grease. You put a crap load on the end, it's going to get on that spark plug and it is going to cause resistance, which means your spark plug is not going to be sparking like it should be or as bright as it should be. And these new spark plugs are crazy different than the old ones. Look at these old ones. Yeah what's sparking seriously that's a misfire okay, ain't doing anything you know uh <laughs> we're the opposite of the new ngk v powers okay let me open this puppy up i'm doing it with one hand guys and yes if you saw my pack of pop tarts it wasn't mine okay it wasn't mine my wife came out here to help and brought pop tarts so thank you so much darling all right so here you go here's the new ones you see that look at that gap that is preset so you don't have to gap these spark plugs you just throw these puppies in guys so nice that's going to last a while and uh man so ngk type r's that's why I'm throwing in this one. As I said, I'll throw the link in the description down below. All right, I'm going to get back to replacing these things. Remember, one at a time, guys. After you replace it, plug it back in so you don't forget about it. All right, so I'm on the last two coils right now on the back left. Ooh, yeah, I love that sunlight. Um, let me see. There we go. All right, those back two coils, I'm gonna pop those in. Uh, these front two are hooked up and good to go. Right after I put those in, I'm gonna go ahead, put the uh, fuel rail with the injectors back on, put the harness on, uh, put this coolant line back on there. I got the clamp right here. You see that? Uh, hook that back up. Remember to put that bracket back for the power steering, uh, power steering bottle. You want to make sure that's on. Double check the other side that you plugged in all the harnesses and uh, or plugged in all the connectors of the harness. Because you definitely don't want to forget any of that, guys. Okay, injectors need hooked up after you put them back. After you finish on the other side, okay, you're gonna put the fuel in, the fuel rails back at the same time. You don't want one going down, then the other going down, okay? Same time, uh, well, I mean, you can do it yourself, put one side on, then the other side. What I'm saying is don't put one down and secure it when you're still working on the other side, bending it all over the place, because you, you'll mess up the, the hoses in the back and you don't want that that'll just give yourself more work all right so once you get the fuel rails back on we're going to throw this intake tube back on okay so take care of the fuel rails first and we'll be right back 
there we have it guys all put back together don't forget about the harness here and there's a harness that comes from this spot right here it's going to go to the right of your tube it is a circular there you go it is a circular plug it's only going to fit one thing guys there you go i'll even show you with more lights there we go circular plug okay so you won't miss where it's supposed to be plugged in at there you go guys all right guys there you have it the 2003 ford expedition spark plug and coil replacement so remember a few key things guys one make sure all the connectors are unplugged before you start yanking anything okay two don't yank on fuel lines three you're supposed to have the battery disconnected disconnect the ground okay disconnect the uh, ground before you start messing with any of the connectors and then at the end hook it back up guys if you like today's video and you are looking for more auto DIY videos I would love to have you as a subscriber on this channel all the parts used in today's video is thrown in the video description down below. I want you guys to know the quality parts and the parts that I use, and I order them off of Amazon. I know right now with the whole, you know, virus thing going on, that, uh, you know, shipping is going to be a little bit slower, but it's still free shipping for um, uh, Amazon Prime members. So, hey, everyone that's actually uh, being affected and everyone that's not affected yet, uh, it's still changing our, our way of lives, guys. So, definitely me and my family's prayers are out to you and yours. And uh, hopefully everyone stays safe and uh, we can get through this thing together. So, uh, guys, thank you so much for actually checking out my video today. Hope you guys stay safe. Enjoy saving money on your vehicles because that's what the whole purpose of this channel is about. So thank you so much, guys. And until next time, hey, keep on wrenching, guys. Take care.